Welcome to the 2023 Economic Preparation in the Press and Channel. I'm your host, Tony. Thank you for joining me on today. Today, we're going to be talking about the middle class disappearing as well as rate interest rate hikes back on the table for 2023 and the increase in the minimum wage in a lot of these states um, and how that's going to affect this economy that's already on a contracting spiral. Uh, yeah, even the world economy is on a contracting spiral. So we're going to look at all of these things. Please be sure to subscribe and support this channel. Preach to me. We provide you with the 100% truth interpretation of the latest financial news as it happens in the markets in the United States and sometimes beyond. Appreciate everyone's support. I thank you for your comments as well. And we will continue to interpret the news and financial news as we um, go through this year. So happy belated new year to everyone. And we're going to get right into it right now. The middle class is disappearing fast in America or it takes more to enter the middle class. An article by CNBC's Make It Today shows that here's how much money, quote, it considers to be it takes to be considered middle class in 20 U.S. major cities. As you know, it continues to grow uh, the mini- middle class continues to shrink since 1971 after reaching a peak of 61 percent. Those were the good old days between 1971 and 1999, 2000, where the middle class grew. Jobs were available. Good paying jobs were available in America, not just in the STEM fields, the science, technology, engineering and manufacturing, but also in retail and hospitality, travel, uh, business, production, insurance construction those were the good old days where the middle class was growing in all areas of the country not just in new york or la or chicago or dc um, or miami but everywhere the pew defines the quote middle class as those earning between two-thirds and twice the median american household income which was around in, two, in 2021 was around seventy thousand seven eighty four, according to the united states census bureau that means that american households earning as little as forty seven thousand one eighty nine and up to one forty one one hundred forty one thousand five sixty eight are technically in the middle class but as you know, the article points out other factors such as family size and location can change what that may look like for you. For example, if you're middle, you have you know a single parent, single mom with four kids, you know even though she may be making a hundred thousand a year, or, or what that what not that has to be distributed through the kids and the bills and different things like that. So that look at that. So you look at the cities and you say to yourself, okay, New York City. Um, New Jersey, they're saying that a low end middle class income is around 55 or 56 K for New York and L.A. And high end middle class income is around 169,000, 165,000, et cetera. Chicago, the same thing. They're saying a low income middle income class is around 52,000 and it goes all the way up to 156 K. Basically, in all of these cities um, and of course, D.C. and other cities, San Francisco and, and Boston, they have, and, uh, they have higher starting points for the, for the lower uh, middle class at around 60 or 70 or 80k but the point remains is that these are just incomes this is not to do with wealth or the wealth is still controlled by the top one percent and the middle class 70 percent 70 to 75 percent of the middle class is one or two paychecks away from being out of the middle class because we all kind of live basically paycheck to paycheck or hand them out some doesn't now if you're in the upper middle class or you're rich those making above 250 300k but basically above 500k a year um that's a different story obviously you know you can live out the interest in your savings or inheritance or banks and that's a good thing i'm not knocking that but the middle class in america is definitely dying um it's definitely shrinking as a result so right now as of april 22 52 percent of adults consider themselves middle or upper class and statistically speaking, that could be correct according to the article. But given the different life situations and perceptions of wealth, there's a good chance that not everyone feels middle class um, who feels middle class actually is and vice versa. You know, so, uh, you know, you look at the savings rates of many Americans here. Um, now you could some of the things you can do to mitigate these obviously is move to a cheaper cost of living state. Get out of these big cities and start moving to a midsize to a small city. We still have the, the kind of like the amenities. And things of that nature, but you don't necessarily need to be there unless your job is remote or something or requires you to be there as an essential worker. Um, then, of course, you have to be there. But, you know, the bottom line is, even if you are in upper middle class, the money, the dollar bill is just doesn't stretch as far in, in many of these cities, not just the major metros listed here. The dollar is getting devalued every year. And this is because the interest rates hike is going up. Minneapolis Fed president, according to MarketWatch.com. 
He's on the FMOC board. That's the Federal Open Market Committee board. They decide interest rates and money supply, whether to shrink or grow the money supply, or whether to raise interest rates or lower interest rates. That's what they can control on the fiscal side. He sees Fed funds rates going up to 5.4% and potentially, quote unquote, much higher. We know that this is what the plan was to continue to to contract this economy and worldwide. The economy is contracting in Australia and Japan. And in 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 Europe, the ECB, European Central Bank, is doing the same thing. Everybody's raising rates, and this was going to continue throughout the majority, uh, through the rest of, I should say, President Biden's term in 2023 and 2024. I don't see the rates coming back down um, to the low that they were at. Uh, mortgage rates and auto auto loan rates and, and all these things. So last month, the Fed raised its benchmark rate to 4.25% to 4.5%. This is going to continue to grow. And as you can see here, right now, uh, the sentiment is that the Fed will not is going to stop raising rates this summer and then quickly start the ease policy. I don't think that's going to happen. They're going to continue to raise these rates until they get down to the goal of 2% inflation, if that even happens, which we know, you and I know, that that's not going to happen because we have so much debt on the table. Now, the minimum Minimum wage, NPR had an interesting article. The minimum wage just increased in 23 states and in D.C. Here's how much. So now we're paying people $15, $20 an hour. But after you strip away taxes, ladies and gentlemen, how much do you really have left? You know, Nebraska states, they're going to raise their minimum wage to $15 an hour by 2026. Uh, Michigan gave the smallest increase, just 23 cents up to, up to uh, 10 10 an hour. Washington State and Washington, D.C. raised their minimum wage up to 16 10 an hour. So, you know. All of these states have raised the minimum wage here, as you can see here, just courtesy of NPR.org. You can see the rates and the size of increase by the state here. Now, remember, but these type of adjustments are just inflation. Most of these are inflation type adjustments, meaning that it's trying to keep up with the pace of inflation. Inflation, as you know, is at 7.7% and growing. The real inflation is at 20% right now in America, 21% easily. So it's these are... What's the point of ma raising the minimum wage if it's not keeping up with inflation? Okay, 10, 15, 16, even 17 dollars an hour is not enough when the real living wage for most families that they need to raise is above 25 dollars an hour easily, 30 dollars an hour in most cases to uh, you know to be able to sustain rent, mortgage, car payments, insurances, gas, utilities, and everything like that. As you can see here, most of the states, some states in Michigan wasn't even paying 10 dollars an hour; they're paying 9, 987. Now it's going to be bumped up to 10 dollars an hour. The highest paying state on here um, and as far as minimum wage on this list so far is at Washington DC at around 16.10 an hour so um, that's the minimum wage so right here is what the 2023 minimum wage is right now and and so in California comes in second at 15.50 an hour for the minimum wage but guys in these states as you know the cost of living is extremely high and it, and even if you don't live in a high cost of living state if you're in <clears throat> excuse me if you're in the midwest or in the south let's say a florida or something at eleven dollars an hour minimum wage uh the rents there are still high as you know the 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 insurances are high there car insurances are higher there in, in hawaii and all the other states that pay 12 11 dollars an hour so are you really getting ahead and is this really going to help the average american um get ahead when when prices inflation is 20 percent but they say these minimum wages are inflation adjustment. So the inflation, in order to match the infl a true inflation adjustment minimum wage, the minimum wage would really have to be starting at basically $25 an hour. And right now, it's half that at $13 an hour. On average, the minimum wage is around $13, $14 an hour. We're looking at all these states in this column here. So whew, we gotta, this is a very bad situation. You have people with less money, spending power money to, to pay their bills and also have money to do other things as well. Um, and the middle class is shrinking and interest rates are going up. This is a recipe for a long-term recession, unfortunately. The good news is we all have time to prepare. The good news is, is that we, you are preparing as best we can. And, and we're just going to have to go through this as a, think of this is not a sprint but a marathon. I mean, this is going to be something that we have to go through step by step um, until the digital dollar arrives. The CBD, CBDC that everybody's talking about. Until that arrives, we're going to have to feel the pain of this dollar uh collapse and being less valuable here in every in not just the major metros but in every city so be prepared for that you know make your dollar stretch if you don't have to go out and do leisurely activities like uh you know doing concerts or movies or games anyway it's safer anyway to do that stuff at home with the not only with the pandemic that may be coming back but also with the crime that's going to be increasing as people are about these streets and these cities be vigilant um you know 
and, and, and continue to conserve not only your money, but conserve resources, natural resources, water, trash bags, um, anything, sewing, get a sewing kit, you know, make things last because you may not be able to get these supplies um, available in the future because supplies are limited and not only in America, but in Europe and China, Asia, everywhere. So think, think about that. Think about those things on this midweek break here, the midweek crisis, uh, midweek and this first midweek in the new year here in 2023. Thank you very much for listening. I look forward to hearing from you soon. I'll be back with more information that's earnings season as the jobs report come out later on by Friday. We'll see what we're looking at then. God bless. Take care.